Smart meters provide almost real-time information um, about how much energy you're using, when you're using it, and that kind of information can support consumers to take actions to reduce their overall consumption. And that can help you save money and it can save carbon as well. So at the moment, a large share of the energy that we consume comes from fossil fuels, and some of that's imported from other countries. Whilst we do generate about 40% of our electricity from renewable sources, just over 40% is generated using gas at the moment, and more than half of that gas we import. In terms of usage, then households use about a third of gas and electricity each year, and they contribute to the daily peaks in demand as well. So that happens normally on weekdays uh, between about 4 and 7 p.m. when there's a crossover between uh, industrial usage, commercial and household usage as well. And the fuels that we use to meet that peak demand tend to be more expensive than others, and they tend to be fossil fuels as well. And that adds to that wholesale cost of electricity and that gets passed back to you by your energy supplier. So by using the information from our smart meter and the rewards that get passed on, we can shift consumption to different times of day and take advantage of our renewable energy sources. Um, and that can help you save money. Smart meters can enable uh, innovation in energy tariffs. You can choose to go onto a time of use tariff if you think it would benefit you. And if you decide it doesn't, you can switch back to a more traditional tariff as well. But there are different types of time of use tariffs. There's quite simple structures where you maybe have a peak time rate and an off peak rate, and those rates are fixed during the times of day. Well, you might have a more dynamic rate as well, so the price you would pay might fluctuate in response to the price uh, of the wholesale energy market. The change to electric cars is really exciting and it's also it's really important for decarbonisation, but it is going to substantially increase the amount of electricity that we use, um, and in particular that might increase the amount of electricity we use at peak times. So if you think that people might typically go out to work during the day and when they get home, it would be natural to plug in your vehicle and charge it up for the next day or the next time you want to use it. But that would probably land within the peak consumption times on weekdays that are normally between 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. And that would add extra stress to our energy networks. So if we can incentivize people to change when they charge their car, it would put much less pressure on peak demand. And we expect that kind of thing to come through uh, time of use tariffs. So it might work like a, a train ticket where you have peak and off peak rates and you pay a lot less when there's less demand to use the energy network. So smart meters support the design and the operation of those kinds of tariffs that pass through pricing signals to consumers, enabling them to take advantage of cheaper prices by shifting their electricity consumption to times where there's less demand. In a more automated world, it might be that consumers can set uh, parameters around when they want to use their vehicle, when they want it to be fully charged, and the minimum level that they'd be happy for that charge to drop down to. So outside of those times, it might be that your car could charge up when there's lots of renewable electricity and prices are cheaper, and then it would avoid higher charges later in the day, making sure that it stayed within those parameters that you'd set out. Uh, so that would mean that electric vehicles weren't adding extra pressure to the grid and consumers could be rewarded for avoiding those peak times. This winter, we've also seen smart meters really support energy security through our demand flexibility service. So the energy system operator launched this scheme specifically in the last year to manage supply and demand when the energy system under really high points of stress. So it's not just electric vehicles that so you use lots of electricity. You, you might be able to um, shift some of your appliance usage, making sure that you're accessing electricity at, at the cheapest times that you can.